Hi, this is Ben from FlexSim, and we're about to start part three in this how-to series on building a model programmatically from an Excel import. And we're focusing right now on conveyors. If you haven't watched part one and part two of this series, I'd recommend you go back and do so, so that you won't be lost. Okay, so we're continuing on with the code. If you recall, we've just finished adding a new conveyor if we just hit a row of the table that had a conveyor name. I don't think I mentioned this in the previous video, but in your Excel data, let me open up my file that has my data, if this cell has any kind of text data, you know, any if it starts with any letter of the alphabet, then it will be imported as string data rather than numeric data. If it's blank, it'll just assume that's a zero numeric value. And you'll see that here in FlexSims imported table. You can see all those blank cells that were in Excel are just assumed to be zeros. And that's fine for our purposes. We just need to understand that that's the way it works. Okay, so we've created that new conveyor. Now we need to modify the section so that the layout is what we have defined in our Excel file. So the important thing to note is that we've got this flag set. If it was a brand new conveyor that we just created, that new conveyor is created with a default section as the first section, and we just need to modify that existing section. So that's why we check to see if this is a new conveyor, go ahead and get a, a reference to that first section that already exists. If it's not a new conveyor, then we need to create a new section. And we do that by using the create copy command. We create a copy of the last section that was added to the conveyor. And we save the reference to that section, that new copy, as sec as well. So sec is either the first section of a new conveyor or a newly copied section of an existing conveyor. Either way, that's the section that we want to modify. So the next thing we do is we go ahead and we modify the properties of that section. Let's jump back to a tree and look at how a section is put together. Remember, we're only concerned with these top five parameters, type, length, rise, angle, and radius. That's why we're modifying the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth nodes under that section. They are the ones that correspond to type, length, and so on. And then all we've got to do is get the values out of our conveyor info table for the type, length, rise, angle, and radius. And we set those values in the tree, so we've just edited the section values, and we're done. And then at that point, we would loop back up to the top of the loop, and we would run this logic for every row of the conveyor info global table. Sorry about that. Uh, when that's all done, just for good measure, we reset the model. We've just created new conveyors, we've changed their layout, it's just a good idea. Go ahead and reset the model back to a baseline, and that's it. So let's watch how this runs. Get all these windows out of the way. I'll delete this existing conveyor so that then we can watch exactly what happens. All right, so jump into the script window and we'll call that command auto build conveyors from Excel and execute it. It should prompt me what do I want to import from Excel, which Excel file do I want to import into FlexSim. It'll do the import that just prompted me that I already had that file open and if I save any changes they won't be saved. So anyway there you go. Now we could look at what we imported from Excel and see that we had, we wanted two conveyors. The first one would be a straight, a curve, and a straight, and the second one is just a straight and a straight with a rise and a fall. You can see that is what we got out of our Excel file. So thanks for taking the time to learn how to programmatically build a model from an Excel import. If you have any questions, go ahead and contact our support team. Thank you very much.